If you're a photographer doing in-person sales and you're not using a projector, I wanna show you exactly why you should be and how we have ours set up to give our clients the best experience. Let's get to it. Incorporating a projector into your experience is going to benefit you in more ways than one. One of them is actually really fun. When our clients come into our studio, we have their image nice and big with their name on the screen. It makes them feel like a rock star. It's kind of like a debut. It's bigger than just any TV in their home. And so it's already making the experience feel heightened. Number two, this is actually more important for guiding the client with wall art. So when you're trying to sell wall art, it can be kind of scary when you're trying to find what size will fit best. When you use a projector screen, you can calibrate it so that you can show your clients true to size images. Whether you wanna show them a 24 by 36 or a 16 by 24, doesn't matter. You can show them those sizes and you're not restricted to the small dimensions of a TV or even a computer screen. Just like so many things in the photography industry, there are so many projectors out there and it can be very overwhelming when you're starting to search and shop for one. So if you don't own a projector, here are some tips on what to look for. Number one, the resolution. We're shooting on cameras that are shooting pretty much at like 6,000 to 8,000 pixels. So our projectors are crushing our images if we're getting 1920p projectors. Go ahead and spring for the 4K projectors so that we can get the most out of our images. And if you really wanna spend just a crap ton of money, go to the 8K, which you'll cry a little bit when you buy that. Get at least a 4K projector. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to look for is the brightness. Now this is a thing that will change the price of a projector drastically from kind of consumer end, which is gonna be like 2000 lumens up to, I mean, you can go to tens of thousands of lumens, but a good range to be in or the bare minimum you wanna be at is 3000. This projector we have mounted on our ceiling is a 3000 lumen projector and we got it when we were in a space that had no windows. Now being in this space, we have to kind of work a little bit in the surroundings. So we actually have these blackout curtains that we use to cancel out all of the ambient light and then we turn off all of our lights to get a really good image. That really sucks and so we're actually upgrading our projector to a higher lumen very soon. So look for a 4K and at bare minimum, 3000 lumen projector and you're already gonna be in a good zone there. So you've got your projector figured out, which is a high quality projector, 4K, bright, all that goodness. But then your projector is only gonna be as good as the signal you send to it. If we're sending HDMI signals more than 25 feet, there is gonna be a loss in quality. A lot of people don't understand that and you can go on Amazon and buy these 100 foot HDMI runs and you're gonna really lose quality. And so you might be asking, well, how do I mount a projector to the ceiling or the top of a wall somewhere and get it to my computer that's on the other side of the room or at a further distance. So I introduced to you SDI cable. This is awesome cable. It can run up to 300 feet without any kind of loss. Now, I don't know who in their right mind would be running a portrait photographer sales room that's more than 300 feet long, but you know, to each his own. You can convert HDMI to this and send this at up to 300 feet. So how are we gonna convert it? We're gonna take at each end an HDMI for our computer and an HDMI for our projector. And we're gonna have two little boxes, micro converters from Blackmagic. And they just, again, take the HDMI signal and convert it to SDI both ways. So we have one at our computer, one at our projector, and we're good to go. So one really cool thing with these boxes is they, they come with power adapters, which that's not the cool thing, but uh, it, it is important for signal. but. It's kind of clunky if you're at the projector and you're trying to plug in this box alongside the projector, you either have to have a splitter or a power strip and that's annoying, I don't wanna do that. So one thing that when you're looking for a projector, one thing to look for is a USB power hub. So a lot of them have this where you can send power to something over USB. So I just have this USB-C cable, I can go right into my converter box and power it with the projector keeps it clean, keeps it nice, and it's just one less thing to worry about. So definitely keep an eye on that when you're looking at projectors, look at the back panels and in, in the product images and find one that has the power over USB. Um, this is awesome, you can just throw this out, you don't need this anymore, and you're 
your, again, projector setup is nice and clean. While you're up there plugging everything in your projector, this is just a little bit of, of a bonus tip. Our motorized screen actually has this transmitter that came with it that I can plug right into the back of the projector. And it, as soon as I turn the projector on, it's gonna drop the screen down. I don't need to have a second remote. I don't need to have a power switch or plug it in or whatever. This little tiny transmitter, like I said, plugs right in, turn on the remote and the screen starts dropping and it's good to go. So that's something to definitely look for if you're getting a motorized projector screen look for one that has a transmitter that you can plug into your projector. I hope this video has been helpful showing you how and why we use projectors in our studio. Be sure to subscribe and follow along because I'm actually gonna be making more videos pertaining to the sales process that we use that I kind of showed a little bit in this video. It's gonna be awesome and we're diving deep into sales. Now, I also am gonna say that in the description, I'm gonna have all the links to the projectors, the cords, all the cables I showed you. I'm putting all the links down below. So be sure to look for that and I'll see you on the next video. <laughs> we end all our videos just with awkwardness. <laughs> That's just our thing, like it's like really professional and it just ends really awkward. <laughs>